Roguelikes are great games for programmers to make. Depending on the level of complexity, they can be made quickly and very addicting for people to play. These projects are great for programmers to try out new mechanics and see if it's fun or worth progressing any further. I've never actually made a roguelike, but today I'm going to change that. My plan is to make a roguelike that is cartoon styled with fast paced movement and combat, and possibly a ability system. With only using primitive shapes, I made a world that's cube-like and very easy to expand upon, especially with an automatic world generator or something of the sort. Before anything else, I wanted to create my character. My character feels pretty good and it's pretty quick, however, there is an issue with the dashing that whenever you dash, it's frame rate dependent. So if you dash with more frames, you actually roll slower, but if you dash with less frames, you dash really quick. Uh, so the way I fix that is by limiting the frame rate on the game. Adding all sorts of delta times everywhere, it's still not working, and with work and school just around the corner, I don't have time to figure it out. Next, I was working on the crossbow for the player to use. The crossbow you can fire indefinitely without any ammo restrictions, however, I am going to add a restriction for the damage it does, and you'll have to upgrade it through the game as the game progresses with tougher enemies and higher health pools. With this art style, I was struggling to find what would be the best antagonist for the player, however, I think I found something that might work, but is a little bit cruel. I'm going with block animals. Animals that are the same style as the game, however, it's a little bit different having a massive lion or bull chase after you, which I think is kind of a fun idea. Before getting into the enemies and the AI, I started working on a point system to add a sense of progression in the game. With trying to make the points look fancy, kind of like an arcade look, I added a scale to the animation to add a bigger emphasis on your points. With points out the way, I started working on each enemy variation. I didn't want my AI to feel like they were going from A to B each time, I wanted them to feel a little bit different on each type. This is a quick run through of what all of them do. The bunny, which is the starter enemy, is the most basic. It just chases after the player, adding a constant pressure forcing the player to move. Next enemy is the sheep. The sheep shoots a projectile near the player's location while moving to random positions. The chicken leaps towards the player every couple seconds. The lion is like the bunny, but a lot faster. The bull charges towards players. The panda jumps in the air and lands where the player is. And finally, the snail rockets towards the enemy, blowing up on contact. With all the base enemies implemented, I started working on bosses. With limited time, I was only capable of adding three bosses, but here are the three which I added. The first boss you encounter is the chicken boss. Chicken boss shoots big egg projectiles towards a player, blowing up into a bunch of little chickens. The next boss is the bull boss. The bull boss acts just like a normal bull, but it's quicker, faster, and spawns little bulls to help him out. The final boss is the robot boss. The robot boss spawns snails that come and blow up, next to you and throws explosive barrels at you, also blowing you up. However, I did add a slight advantage to the player in this section, where if you blow up a snail or a explosive barrel, you will blow up everything surrounding it, all the snails and barrels. After implementing all these AI and the bosses, I started working on a spawner script that would make a wave system with a boss in every three difficulty increases. A difficulty increase is basically every 30 seconds, the difficulty gets a little bit harder, making the player struggle a little more. The difficulty does not directly affect AI in the sense of increasing health or damage, but it does add more enemies that are tougher into the mix, creating harder scenarios for the player to survive in. With all this being said, the spawner script was a lot smarter than it is now. In the beginning of the spawner script, I first made it check the surroundings of the object to make sure it wasn't colliding with the player or a tree, but as the enemies grew in the scene, it kept getting more and more objects in the surrounding areas, creating a stack overflow, cancelling out the script entirely. Entirely. After testing with the spawner a lot and planning everything out, I think I got the spawner to spawn all the enemies in a very good way, making the difficulty not too hard, but increase gradually. While planning out the game, I've only used the immune system on my player, so I actually wasn't taking damage and there was no threat. The way I chose to balance out the player's health in regaining health slash taking damage is by just applying a baseline damage to the player whenever he gets hit. But, whenever he wants to gain health, he has to kill an enemy and regain a small portion. Before I had any death implementation, I just had the player restart the level whenever he died. 
Now I have a respawn menu that comes out so you can go back to the main menu or replay the level. It will also show if you beat your old highest score and it will set your new high score if you got one. Of course the text also bounces like an arcade to make it more fun. I quickly threw together a main menu and a pause menu. These are meant to function as just main UI. I didn't do anything fancy like animations where they slide in or out. I just didn't have enough time to really put more effort into this so I'm just trying to wrap up the game. But I find that it works pretty well and it looks pretty good. It's not the best, I definitely could have done better, but it does what it needs. Thinking I had not much time left, I spent a couple hours on the audio design for this game. I used all sorts of pops and clicks to make the game sound a little bit satisfying without the music involved anyway. I find this type of audio soothing, however the music does overpower it whenever it kicks in. I mute the music most of the time because copyright, but I find that it's pretty good if you just want to listen to some upbeat music anyway. Hence the reason why the only button you have in the game is to mute the music. With all the audio in place and all the other mechanics that I was planning on implementing, I then built my game and tested it out. Glad to see that everything's working perfectly and no lag issues like previous times. While bug testing came to a finish, I started working on the itch.io page and some art for the game. I've been working on that for a little bit now, and I think I got somewhere where it's decent. It's nowhere near as good as what I can do, but the rush that I have to get this done is kinda insane. So, trying to make this my best is a little bit harder. With that all being said, it's time to build my final build, upload it to itch, and I'm done. So I hope you all enjoyed me making a quick little roguelike that doesn't have too much in it, but it's kind of a fun game. I do want to add that I'm looking into more game engines to start creating games in instead of just Unity. I've been coding in Unity for I feel like 6 to 7 years and trying out other game engines that aren't as amazing or even are amazing would be awesome. Such as Godot, Unreal Engine, or even Roblox Studio, which is a game engine. But all of them have their own learning curves and their own way to program or even with benefits that Unity doesn't have. So if any of you guys have a game engine that might be interesting to look into, something that might be smaller than most others, I would love to try it out and just give it my best shot. I've been coding for quite a long time, so hopefully I can pick up on the language and the way it organized, but we'll see how it goes. And if you're still watching, please subscribe and give it a like. It'd be very helpful for me to grow my own channel and get my name out there. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and goodbye. Oh, and watch one of these videos. They're pretty good.